in boxing, the charade is always that the consumer is getting what's best for them. And oftentimes, there are examples where the best of what the sport has to offer can be experienced, but only in minuscule portions, never fully divulging positively what the sport has to offer. And then there are the people who are on the precipice of the involvement of the sport, trying to give the impression that they want to drive the sport ahead. But is that truly the case? And when you talk about investors, such as Saudi Prince, Turkey al there is a question to call with these circumstances, because his promotions over the past couple of years have me thinking. Puppetry, pulling the legs and strings of the masses in boxing. This man and his economic influence has allowed us to see certain events take place, certain fight matchups take place. But is it truly the best for boxing overall? Welcome to Loon, Coon, and Buffoonery, part 21. We are in the midst of another change in the sport of boxing, where we're seeing certain fights be able to get made due to those who could fund the matches, where promoters are no longer doing their job, where they do not enact their powers of putting their fighters' names and their accomplishments out to the masses on display to get us to understand why we should buy a ticket to watch these warriors compete in the sport. Too much is given to these men who don't or no longer do their jobs. They sit back and tell the fans, nobody wants that fight. Nobody's gonna fight. Who's gonna pay for the fight? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when you have investors like Turkey al who basically, when it comes to the sport of boxing, has a bottomless wallet, he can bring even the most sleuthful, deceitful, con artists of promoters together to put on matches that are also events that will make people come. But there's one condition. You have to go to Saudi. Saudi, a place of deep spiritual faith and belief has now kind of flipped on its end and they're opening themselves up to the Western world of tradition and getting involved in entertainment and they want people to come. But when you have promoters out here who have had talent beyond the realm of understanding and they won't put the fights on that the people want to see, what do you really think will happen once they start getting involved with Turkey al and others who are more than capable of providing money that no one else would give. This further assists in eroding the ethics of the sport. Boxing has always been a sport of deception from the start. It was once referred to as the peddling of the flesh, where you pit one man, mano a mano, against another, and you have those invested in the outcome, giving their allegiance 
to one side or another and for a bag at the end of it all. And the bag is divided up amongst those who have invested and the participants of the actual battles are awarded a fee, a payday, often not enough to cover their injuries, often not enough to really live a sustainable lifestyle on. And so here they are matched up in another match and another match and another match. But what happens when injury, age, and erosion takes place? Where is the investment in that aspect of the participants? Where are the bottomless wallets and banks when fighters who need some type of Medicare, who need some type of pension, because you can't do this all of your life. You can only do it within the prime years of life of a man. So when someone takes their video game approach to being able to be an influence on the sport, but all the while only adding to the corruption, you have to step back and take a look at things for what they really are and who's pulling the strings and the legs over the masses. This is Stormy B-Man. Shout out to the mighty LDBC and Liberated Perspective, a third eye view of the world. For more content such as this, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Peace to everyone out there and everyone please remain safe.